Walker couldn't understand why grandma didn't want her anymore. They had depended on each other for five years, and just like that, grandma said she didn't want her. Gua threw a tantrum, clinging to grandma's leg. Don't give me away. Please, grandma. But grandma still coldly said, you can't stay with me anymore. Gua was found by Grandma Lin while she was scavenging for trash. Gua knew her own story. At that time, she was about four or five years old, old enough to remember things. She recalled that day being overcast. She was dizzy from hunger, rummaging through a garbage heap for something to eat. She happened to find an apple with a small rotten spot and was about to take a bite when someone lifted her up entirely, like picking up a dirty stray cat. Gua was tossed onto an empty patch of ground. A hunched old woman stood with her hands on her hips, scrutinizing her. The apple rolled away. Gua frowned and kept rubbing her sore backside. This was Gua's first encounter with Grandma Lin. Grandma Lin broke a cold white steamed bun in half, which she took out from a cloth bundle and shared it with Guar. The old woman and the little girl sat by the roadside and ate together. After they finished, Grandma Lin wiped the crumbs from Guar's mouth and asked if she wanted to stay with her from then on. Gua nodded vigorously. So Grandma Lin took Gua home. Guar's name was given by Grandma Lin, derived from that half-rotten apple. Grandma Lin said, a child's name should be humble, easy to raise. Grandma Lin lived in an urban village on the outskirts of the city, where all sorts of people lived in a haphazard manner. Her home was small, consisting of two tiny rooms. The outer room had a wooden table, broken chairs, and a few cooking utensils. The inner room was even smaller, barely fitting a bed. Outside the house was a small yard, piled with all sorts of junk that Grandma Lin had collected, forming little hills. At first, Guar just followed Grandma around, helping out when she scavenged for trash. Later, as she grew older, she started doing household chores, learning to cook, and sorting the junk Grandma brought back, tying them up in bundles. In the third year, on a scorching summer evening, Grandma Lin came back and asked Guar about her age. Guar said she wasn't sure. Maybe six or seven. Grandma Lin looked at the overly dazzling sunset outside the door. After a long while, she said, you need to go to school. She dragged herself to her bed, rummaged under her pillow, and pulled out a scattered stack of bills. So Guar went to school. Grandma Lin bought her new clothes, a new school bag, a new pencil case, and new notebooks and pencils. Guar didn't know how much all that cost, but for the next two weeks, the only dish on the table was a plate of wilted pickles. But Gua was very happy inside. No one had ever been this good to her. Grandma must really like her. All along, this was what Gua believed. But now, it seemed like Grandma didn't like her anymore. Recently, she felt that Grandma was intentionally distancing herself, acting very differently from before, no longer as close. Gua was very upset. She couldn't understand why, until this weekend morning. Grandma Lin was taking Guar to the city. Grandma, is there an amusement park in the city? Guar asked as Grandma Lin braided her hair. Yes. The pain from her scalp was intense, but Guar endured it, her little face scrunched up. Grandma, when we get to the city, can you take me to see it? As if afraid Grandma Lin would refuse, Guar quickly added, I won't play on anything. I just want to see it. Grandma Lin didn't respond. With two neat and pretty braids, Guar followed Grandma Lin to the bus station. They caught the earliest bus, and after over an hour's ride, Guar had dozed off. When they got off the bus, they coincidentally ran into one of Grandma Lin's acquaintances, a robust, 40-something woman with a loud voice and a radiant face, greeting Grandma Lin from afar. Guar knew who she was. Grandma Lin called her Chun Mei, and Guar called her Aunt Chun Mei. Chun Mei was one of the many motorcycle taxi drivers outside the bus station, the only woman among a group of men, making her quite conspicuous. On the third day of every month, Grandma Lin would go out to visit a relative living in the city. After getting off the bus, there was still a long way to go, so Grandma Lin had arranged with Aunt Chun Mei to give her a ride on the third of every month. When visiting this relative, Grandma Lin never took Guar. 
Hua knew Aunt Chen Mei because every year during the Chinese New Year, she would bring a bundle of cured meat to pay respects to Grandma Lin. Where are you headed? I'll give you a ride, Aunt Chen Mei said warmly to Grandma Lin. Grandma Lin looked at the dense crowd of people coming out of the station, smiled at Aunt Chen Mei and said, No need, there are too many people today, don't want to keep you from making money. We'll take the bus, it's only two stops. Despite Aunt Chuan Mei's insistence, Grandma Lin refused to take her ride, leaving her no choice. Grandma Lin grabbed Guo's arm and walked away. Before leaving, Guo glanced back at Aunt Chun Mei. Aunt Chun Mei looked at them with a sympathetic gaze, as if she wanted to say something but held back. Guo looked up at Grandma, feeling a sense of foreboding. She had a gut feeling that Grandma was hiding something from her. A marble table, beautiful ceramic plates, and a spread of fragrant dishes. Guar looked timidly at the adults chatting and laughing around her. She felt hungry but didn't dare to pick up her chopsticks. Gua stole a glance at Grandma Lin. Grandma rarely smiled like this. This was the home of a middle-aged couple. The man wore a maroon shirt and the woman wore a fitted purple dress. Both had kind faces. Their conversation mostly revolved around Guo which made her feel uneasy and self-conscious. The child is very well-behaved, smart, and sensible. She got the first place in her class in the midterm exams, Grandma Lin said, taking a stack of certificates from Guar's pink school bag and handing them to the woman in the purple dress. The woman accepted the certificates, smiling warmly at Guar with a look of tenderness and affection. Guar ate the meal absent-mindedly. When they were about to leave, the couple came out to see them off. Grandma Lin gave Guar a discreet signal, and Guar immediately called out sweetly, Goodbye, Aunt Wang and Uncle Lee. The woman handed Grandma Lin a thick envelope, which Grandma Lin tried to push back. They went back and forth several times, making Guar's legs ache from waiting. Finally, the woman lowered her voice and said, It's just a little something from us, nothing more. The child's clothes are old, use it to buy her some new ones. Guar saw Grandma Lin's eyes redden. Grandma Lin accepted the envelope, thanked the couple, and led Guar away. Once they were outside the community gate, Grandma Lin said to Guar, didn't you want to go to the amusement park? Guar was so happy she almost jumped for joy. The afternoon sunlight was beautiful, and Guar had a lot of fun at the amusement park. Or so Grandma Lin thought. With her back hunched, she watched from a distance as Guar rode the carousel. The music from the loudspeakers drowned out many things. Perhaps she mistook another child's laughter for Guar's. Grandma Lin didn't see Guar secretly wiping away tears. By evening, they headed home. Passing by a finely decorated children's accessory store, the shop assistant gave them a disdainful look. Grandma Lin led Guar inside, carefully picking out a pink crystal hairpin and gently placing it on Guar. Grandma Lin looked at the little girl in the mirror. The bright lights were somewhat dazzling. She looked beautiful, and Grandma Lin was very pleased. But as they left the store, Guara suddenly burst into tears. Grandma, why don't you want me anymore? Guara was heartbroken. She and Grandma had depended on each other for five years, and now Grandma said she didn't want her anymore. What future do you have staying with an old woman like me? Grandma Lin pulled Guar close, bending down to speak softly. She spoke earnestly. Your Uncle Lee and Aunt Wong don't have children and they like you so much. You will have a better life with them. But Guar was still unwilling, standing stubbornly with tears in her eyes. Grandma Lin's face darkened and her tone became harsher. You stubborn girl. When Grandma speaks, you must listen. Suddenly, her voice softened again. Your teacher said you have good grades. If you attend middle and high school in the city, you will surely get into a good university. Grandma can't afford to send you to a good school, but if you stay with Uncle Lee and Aunt Wong, they can send you to the best private middle school in the city. Guar no longer argued, but big tears welled up in her eyes, refusing to fall. Life went on as usual when they returned home. Until a week later, when Guar's teacher came for a home visit and asked Grandma Lin, has something happened to Guar lately? Her grades suddenly dropped to the bottom of the class. Grandma Lin asked Guar, what's going on? Guar felt a lump in her throat and said, I did it on purpose. 
Grandma Lin grabbed the broom by the door, ready to hit her, and the teacher couldn't stop her. Guo Her blocked with her hands, crying and yelling, If you send me away, I won't get good grades. She thought angrily, Let's see how you send away a disobedient, unruly, and unsuccessful child. The broom snapped in half in Grandma Lin's hands. After the teacher left, Grandma Lin cursed and scolded all day long. Guar didn't listen to a single word. In the evening, Grandma Lin called Guar to eat. There's meat tonight. Guar ignored her, took her book to the yard, and, under the streetlight outside the wall, recited the lesson the teacher taught yesterday. Her tears had dried up in the afternoon. She clung to Grandma Lin's leg, crying her heart out. Please don't send me to someone else, Grandma. Grandma Lin hit and scolded her, her own tears falling, but in the end, she only said, You can't stay with me anymore. So Guo Er stopped crying. Guo went to school on Monday as usual, but she didn't eat a single meal for two days. During Wednesday's morning reading, Guo Er fainted and fell from her chair. Her teacher took her to the hospital, and Grandma Lin hurried over with her cane to pick her up. Grandma Lin's legs weren't good, so she walked with a noticeable limp. Guar woke up after two four drips, opening her eyes to see Grandma Lin talking to her teacher without looking at her. Guar thought, I'll get beaten when I get home again. But this time she was wrong. Grandma Lin didn't beat Guar. In the twilight, they sat side by side on the doorstep and Grandma Lin seriously asked Guar, why don't you want to go? Guar thought for a moment and lied, I don't like them. They're good people, Grandma Lin said, her tone resigned. Guar's eyebrows raised and then drooped, but I just don't like them. Grandma Lin was silent for a long time. If you don't like them, then forget it. We won't talk about this anymore. Guar's eyebrows shot up, really? Grandma Lin had softened. She also couldn't bear to part with Guar. Grandma Lin sighed and smiled helplessly. Guar threw herself into Grandma Lin's arms, and Grandma Lin gently patted her back. Feeling it wasn't enough, Guar gave Grandma Lin a kiss on the cheek. But what if Aunt Wong and Uncle Lee aren't happy? Guar worried after kissing her. Don't worry about that. I'll talk to them. Life returned to how it was before. Gua went to school every day, completed her homework, and Grandma Lin went out early and came back late, collecting anything around the neighborhood that could be sold for money. When she returned, she always carried or dragged a large plastic bag filled with items, resembling a slow-moving, elderly snail. If Guar finished school early, she would go find Grandma Lin to help carry some of the load. In the twilight, their two figures walked side by side, struggling a bit. Suddenly, a whimper came from a corner. Guar perked up her ears. Grandma, listen. Grandma Lin paused. Woof woof. Guar put down what she was carrying and followed the sound, finding a furry little bundle among a pile of randomly stacked junk. Grandma, there's a puppy here. Guar said excitedly. The little puppy was picked up by the scruff of its neck by Guar, its limbs curled into a ball, its eyes bright and shiny. In the orange glow of the setting sun, it gleamed a golden hue, a beautiful little yellow dog. Guar turned to look at Grandma Lin, her eyes full of pleading. Grandma Lin ignored her. Gua held the puppy to her chest with one hand and picked up her small bag of collected items with the other, catching up to Grandma Lin. Grandma, it's so well behaved. Let's keep it. It can guard our yard. Grandma Lin gave Gua a sidelong glance, neither agreeing nor disagreeing. You'll regret it. Just like I regret it. Gua smiled, knowing Grandma Lin had agreed. I won't. Grandma Lin said grumpily, If it makes a mess, you'll throw it in the trash heap tomorrow. Gua replied solemnly, I'll take responsibility for it. I will never throw it in the trash heap. I will never abandon it. Grandma Lin turned her face away. This was the second time Guar saw Zhao Qing. The first time, they had only briefly met. At that time, Guar didn't know Zhao Qing was the main person in charge of the orphanage. If she had known, Guo thought, she definitely wouldn't have smiled at her so carelessly. Zhao Qing wore a clean white t-shirt and fitted jeans. She looked very approachable and seemed naturally friendly. But Guo didn't like her. Grandma was still determined to send her away, and she couldn't understand why. If someone loves you, 
Would they try every possible way to abandon you? Gua had asked her deskmate. Her deskmate was a smart girl, well-read in many magazines and comics, knowledgeable beyond her years. Maybe she has some unavoidable hardship, the girl suggested. Guar's heart raced. Like what? The girl's eyes twinkled. Like, maybe she has a terminal illness. Guar felt a chill run down her spine. After school, she rushed home with her backpack, only to see Zhao Qing visiting again. You have to help me. The child doesn't want to go. Grandma Lin's voice trailed off. Guo stood at the doorstep, clutching her backpack straps, her eyes red like a little rabbit's. Zhao Qing greeted Guo warmly, but Guo went straight to her bedroom without a word and shut the door. On the bedside table was a photo of a young man. He looked very young, barely in his 20s, with a delicate appearance and a shy look in his eyes. She didn't recognize him and had never seen this photo before. Grandma must have taken it out and forgotten to put it back. Why did Grandma take out this photo? Was it for Auntie Zhao to see? What's wrong with Grandma? Is she really sick? Is she sending her away because of an illness? Guara's mind was a mess, but she faintly heard Zhao Qing talking to Grandma Lin. Grandma, can I have a word alone with Guara? Gua cracked the door open and saw Zhao Qing smiling and waving her over. Reluctantly, she walked out. Zhao Qing led her to the yard, then squatted down to look her in the eye. But Guo spoke first. Auntie Zhao, Grandma is going to send me away, right? Zhao Qing looked at her and gently shook her head. It's not like that, Guo. Listen to me. Your grandma is getting old, and her health isn't good. With her current income, she can't get the adoption papers. Your household registration hasn't been filed yet. Continuing like this isn't a solution, is it? Guo listened half understanding. Is grandma, is she sick? Is that why she's so anxious to send me away? Zhao Qing lowered her head and was silent for a few seconds, as if considering whether to tell Guar the truth. After a long time, she raised her head and said to Guar, don't worry, your grandma isn't sick. The reason she wants to send you to the orphanage is because. Because of what? Guar asked urgently, because her son is about to be released from prison. Gua stood still. Grandma. Grandma has a son? She just showed me a photo. Her son made a mistake and was sentenced to 20 years. She also told me that on the third of every month, she takes a bus to visit him. Zhao Qing gently touched Guo's hair, her eyes filled with pity. Andy didn't want to tell you at first, but then I thought, you're already nine years old, a big girl now. You can understand these things. Grandma Lin's son has been in there for so many years. When he gets out, he'll need family support and care. You're at a critical age and grandma can't manage both. She's had a hard time all these years. Think about her. A tear fell onto the concrete, quickly spreading into a small puddle. Guar wiped away her tears and bit her lip. I understand, Auntie Zhao. Let me think it over. Once I've made up my mind, I'll ask grandma to call you. Zhao Qing left. Watching her back, Guo suddenly realized why Grandma always left her behind on the third of every month. Guo couldn't describe her feelings. How did Grandma get through all those years without her? She felt sadness and bitterness, and a slight, hidden anger. Grandma's son is coming back, so she doesn't need her anymore. She felt like the useless junk they collected, scattered all over the streets, not worth much. Guar wanted so badly to kneel in front of Grandma again, crying and begging her not to send her away. I'll study hard, go to a good university. I'll earn lots of money, take you on trips, and take care of you. Please don't leave me. If she cried like that, Grandma would definitely soften. But she didn't do it. Guar didn't want to make things harder for Grandma. A day later, Guar told Grandma she was willing to go. Grandma Lin was stunned for a long time. Guo saw her turn away to wipe her tears. She had never understood before why Grandma, only in her early 60s, looked much older than her age. Appearing 70 or 80, with a head of white hair, a stooped back, and a limping walk. But now Guo understood, it was because life had been too hard for her. Grandma Lin called Xiao Qing, and they agreed to take Guo to the orphanage in two weeks. Guo sat in the yard, organizing the piles of junk for Grandma Lin one last time. Grandma Lin came out, 
holding onto the door frame, and shakily beckoned her over. Guar, come here. Grandma Lin took out a jade bracelet from a wooden box and handed it to Guara. This was given to me by my mother-in-law. I wanted to give it to my daughter-in-law. Gua hesitated but took it. Grandma Lin then pulled out a new set of clothes from a box under the bed and asked Gua to put them on. It had been a long time since Gua had new clothes. In the past, she would have jumped with joy, but now she just felt her nose sting. Grandma Lin looked at Gua in the new clothes, her face showing satisfaction. She pulled Gua closer, touching foreheads. Child, Grandma's thinking of giving you a new name. What do you think? Guara wanted to say she liked her current name, but the warmth from grandma's hands and forehead made her nod. Let's not call you Lin Guara anymore. Let's call you Zhao Yang, Lin Zhao Yang. Like the rising sun, full of hope and light. Grandma Lin's eyes were moist, her voice like a final instruction. Child, remember, in this life, you must live honestly and with integrity. The day before Zhao Qing was supposed to leave, she suddenly received a call from Guara. Auntie Zhao, Grandma caught a cold yesterday. It's hard for her to manage alone. Can I stay and take care of her for a few more days? Could you come get me next week instead? Zhao Qing didn't think much of it and agreed. What she didn't know was that Gua had already hit the road. Using Grandma Lin's bad legs as an excuse, she didn't let her see her off far. Once she stepped out of the courtyard, rounded two street corners, Guato broke into a run, constantly looking back anxiously. Two days ago, their usually obedient dog, De Huang, had run away. Grandma Lin had said, if it wants to go, let it go. I can't be bothered to take care of it alone. At that moment, Guo thought, maybe she was just like De Huang. Abandoned by her biological mother, now she was being abandoned by grandma. When her mother abandoned her, she was too young. She seemed to remember a silhouette of a young woman, but Guar couldn't see her face clearly. Did Guar hate her? Maybe. But when Guar thought of her, it didn't make her very sad. But when she thought of grandma, her heart ached. On the night before she was supposed to leave, Guar made a sudden decision. She didn't want to go to the orphanage. She didn't want to be an orphan. If grandma didn't want her, she would wander alone, like the heroic women in the TV shows. Guar imagined everything too ideally and beautifully. She was more mature than her peers. But no matter what, she was still just a nine-year-old girl, with a mix of innocence and ignorance giving birth to her audacious plan. Guar took a bus to the city. She didn't actually know where she was going. Leaning against the bus window, she couldn't help but think about what Annie Zhao had said, Grandma's son had been in prison for many years. Suddenly, she sat up straight with a jolt. What kind of crime warrants 20 years? Robbery, arson, or murder? When he gets out and goes to grandma, will she be in danger? Guar's heart was pounding. No, 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 absolutely not. But now, what should she do? Gua was restless, as if sitting on pins and needles. Her movements were so noticeable that the elderly man next to her gave her a sharp look. As the bus entered the city, it soon drove into the terminal. In her anxiety, Guar suddenly saw a familiar figure through the window. A woman in a maroon vest, carelessly straddling a blue motorcycle, her fleshy arms showing faint muscle lines. Ite was enti mei. Grandma took her bike every third of the month to visit her son. Chanmei took Guar to a small roadside eatery and treated her to a bowl of noodles. Guar lied, saying that Grandma Lin wasn't feeling well and had sent her to visit her son instead. You're going to see Lin Can? Chan Mei asked. Grandma Lin's son's name was Lin Can. Gua suddenly thought of the new name Grandma had given her a few days ago. Lin Chaoyang. Remember, in this life, one must live honorably and with integrity. Did Grandma have the same expectations for her imprisoned son? Why did she insist on seeing him? Gua couldn't quite explain it herself. Maybe if she saw him and found that he wasn't as frightening as she imagined, she would feel at ease. If possible, she wanted to tell him about grandma's small ailments and plead with him to take good care of her. But a little kid talking to a middle-aged man about these things seemed ridiculous. Guar's thoughts drifted. 
Chunmei glanced at her, seeing that she hadn't spoken for a while, then nonchalantly picked up the large bowl and drank the remaining broth, slamming the bowl down on the wooden table with a loud bang. Guo snapped back to reality. Chunmei, too lazy to expose the scheming little girl, grabbed the keys from the table and stood up to leave. Gua hesitated. Chunmei turned back, raising an impatient eyebrow. Are you coming or not? Chunmei drove the motorcycle fast. Guar's small hands clung tightly to Chunmei's waist, but even so, she felt like her soul was struggling to keep up behind the speeding bike. The bike finally stopped, and Guar took off her helmet, looking up. They were not at the prison, but a cemetery. A myriad of doubts and unease filled Guar's heart, as if her chest were stuffed with cotton. Auntie Chunmei, why did you bring me here? Chunmei leaned against the motorcycle, pulled a cigarette from her pocket, and lit it. She exhaled a cloud of smoke. Gua heard her suddenly snort. You said your grandma sent you to see Lin Can? Then why didn't you bring incense and paper money? Guar's mind couldn't process it all at once. Chunmei took a deep drag, then casually extinguished the cigarette, looking at Guar with an ambiguous expression. Her son has been dead for 10 years. Aren't you afraid of breaking her heart by running away? The city was working on creating a civilized city, so starting this year, the cemetery had banned burning paper offerings. Chanmei had just learned about this today. She bought two bouquets of white chrysanthemums from an elderly flower vendor at the entrance and placed them in front of Lin Can's grave. Guar followed Chanmei out of the cemetery, and the two of them sat for a while under the shade of a big tree at the entrance. Guar had many questions, but she didn't know where to start. Chanmei saw the thoughts swirling in the little girl's head and began to speak. He was sentenced to life, but later it was reduced to 20 years. Then, 10 years before he was due to be released, he suddenly got sick and died. She felt a surge of absurdity and annoyance. Explaining all this to a naive little kid seemed utterly pointless. So grandma didn't go to visit relatives every month, nor did she go to the prison to see her son. She came here. Don't tell me you only found out today. Ignoring Chunmei's sarcasm, Guar asked, How do you know all this? Chunmei replied impatiently, Your grandma mentioned it to me once. Gua suddenly felt a wave of sadness. Why didn't grandma ever tell me? Chunmei hadn't expected this question. After thinking for a long while, she replied, Maybe because I'm an outsider. It doesn't matter if I know. This explanation seemed a bit odd. Chanmei averted her gaze from Guar's face. She thought the little girl was too perceptive and worried that Gua might catch on to something. Chanmei decided to change the subject. Has your grandma ever told you about me? Gua Shukia hit. Chanmei turned to Guar with a smile. Your grandma saved my life. Believe it or not, I used to be a very timid person. My ex-husband was abusive and I went through a lot of trouble to divorce him. After the divorce, I had no income and started driving a motorcycle taxi. As a woman, people are often prejudiced against you and reluctant to ride with you. But your grandma became a regular customer. One time, it was raining and I was wearing a raincoat while giving her a ride to the cemetery. My phone kept ringing during the trip. I answered it and my brother told me that our mother had accidentally fallen and was unconscious. He told me to come quickly. I was in a panic, but on that stretch of road, there were no villages or shops nearby. I couldn't just leave your grandma by the roadside. After thinking for a moment, I told your grandma that I would drive faster to get her there. She said as long as I was careful. But an accident still happened. It was rainy, and the road was slippery. My speed was almost at 100 kilometers per hour. At a curve, the wheels skidded, and we both went crashing into a ditch. I hit my head during the fall and was almost knocked out. She was luckier than me, only getting some scrapes on her hand. My phone flew out and landed in a puddle, becoming unusable. Somehow, she found the strength to pull me out of that deep ditch and silently carried me toward the city. Chuenmei's eyes glazed over as she remembered that rainy day. You know, don't you? Her back is hunched and she has a limp, yet she carried me for a long distance. Eventually, we passed a repair shop and she persuaded someone to drive me to the hospital. Without her, I, I don't know if I would have survived. 
Guara stayed silent, but her heart ached. Now, tell me about yourself. Chanmei took a deep breath. Why did you run away by yourself? Guo said with a feeling of grievance and anger, I thought grandma wanted to send me away because her son was coming back. Since grandma doesn't want me anymore, then I'll just leave. Chanmei couldn't help but laugh. How could that be? It's true. Before I left, grandma cleaned the house and the yard so meticulously. She took all the scrap from the yard and sold it. She used to hoard a lot of junk she couldn't bear to throw away. If it wasn't for her son coming back, Guar's words suddenly trailed off. She looked absentmindedly at Chun Mei and murmured, but if it wasn't for her son coming back, why would she insist on sending me away, cleaning up the house? What else could it be for? Guar's heart skipped a beat, then sank abruptly, sinking deep down. Frantically, she grabbed Chun Mei's wrist. Aunt Chun Mei, can you lend me your phone? I want to call Grandma. I'm really worried. She dialed the number over and over again, but no one answered. Guo burst into tears. Suddenly, she thought of someone else. Hello, who is this? Aunt Zhao, it's me, Lin Guo. Guo sounded urgent. Could you help me check on Grandma? Hao King replied, Guo, I was just looking for you. Where did you go? It's lucky you weren't home when the fire broke out. What are you saying, there was a fire? Yes, there was a fire. I was worried, so I came back this afternoon to check on Aunt Lin. Xiao Qing continued, but I didn't expect there to be a fire. Your grandma has been taken to the hospital and is still being treated. Her condition isn't good. Where are you right now? Tears streamed down Gore's face as she spoke incoherently. I, I'm with Aunt Chun Mei. I'll come back right away. Chun Mei drove quickly with Guara in tow. Guara's heart was in turmoil. Aunt Zhao said Grandma was in critical condition and she didn't know how she was doing. Critical condition. Would it cost a lot of money for treatment? Without money, would the doctors still treat Grandma? Guara asked Chun Mei to stop the car. Aren't you going to the hospital? God has stated. E. I need to go find someone. Aunt Chun Mei, you go ahead. I'll come in a moment. Chan Mei felt uneasy, but Guo Er got out of the car without waiting for her to respond. A scooter crossed the road, causing the bus behind to stop at the intersection, blocking the view for a few minutes. By the time the bus swayed and moved away, Guo was no longer in sight. Chan Mei, anxious, reluctantly left. Guo er boarded the bus. She had a good memory and followed the route Grandma had taken her. After changing buses three times, she arrived at the entrance of this upscale residential area. Uncle Lee and Aunt Wong's home was on the sixth floor. Guar couldn't wait for the elevator and chose to take the stairs. She ran up breathlessly, tears falling steadily. I don't want it to be a heroine anymore. I don't want new clothes or pretty hairpins. It's okay if I don't eat meat. It's okay to go hungry and get beaten. I, I just want Grandma to come back. Buddha. God, Queen Mother. Please, let Grandma come back. I'm willing to do anything. Wang Lan opened the door, and before her stood Guo, half kneeling on the threshold. Aunt Wang, save my grandma. Guo's face was smeared with tears and snot, flushed red, and her words came out fragmented and disjointed. It took her a while to catch her breath. Wang Lan panicked. What happened? What's wrong? Good child, get up quickly and tell me. My, my grandma, she's been burned in a fire. She's in the ICU. Grandma told me before, without money, the doctors won't treat her. Gu er kriegt höchste Eichelie, nearly fainting. She suddenly clung tightly to Wang Lan's legs. Save my grandma. I'm willing. I'm willing to be your daughter. Save my grandma. I beg you. Wang Lan's eyes welled up with tears. She comforted Guo patting her back to help her calm down, while instructing her husband, oldly, to fetch the car keys. They rushed to the hospital, where they saw Zhao Qing and Chan Mei waiting outside the ICU. Wang Lan explained the situation to them, and Zhao Qing nodded gratefully. Oldly held Guo's hand, while Wang Lan squatted down to reassure her, promising to cover all of Grandma Lin's medical expenses. Zhao Qing watched the kind-hearted couple and thought that they were more suitable for Guo's future than any welfare institution. A few hours earlier, Zhao Qing had arrived at Grandma Lin's house just as the firefighters were finishing up. 
The ambulance was blaring its sirens as Grandma Lin was carried out on a stretcher. Without hesitation, Xiao Qing boarded the ambulance as a family member. She looked at Grandma Lin on the stretcher. Her body seemed smaller than usual, frail and weak, with black smoke in her lungs, barely conscious and somewhat delirious. Her mouth moved as if she were saying something. Zhao Qing leaned in closer, finally hearing her clearly. Grandma Lin said, Guar, I've atoned for Kin Kan's sins. Grandma is leaving. Take care of yourself. She was mentioning Guar. Earlier, Zhao Qing had spoken with the police colleagues and learned the cause of the accident. Grandma Lin had tried to commit suicide by burning charcoal in the house, accidentally igniting the curtains and causing the fire. Zhao Qing was puzzled and asked about Grandma Lin's incarcerated son, only to be met with incredulity. He's been dead for 10 years. There's no son. It dawned on her that Grandma Lin had deceived her. Zhao Qing looked at Grandma Lin lying in the ambulance with a helpless and bitter expression. The Ken Ken she mentioned must have been her son's name. Her son had made a mistake, was sentenced to 20 years, and died halfway through due to illness. Grandma Lin had tormented herself for 10 years to make up for the 10 years her son owed. 20 minutes later, as the ambulance came to a stop, Zhao Qing suddenly felt something tug at her. Grandma Lin's weathered hand moved slightly, and she briefly regained consciousness. You know everything now, right? Just now, I heard him talking to you. Zhao Qing was speechless. Grandma Lin looked at her with incredibly gentle eyes. Please, can you do me one favor? If I die, don't let Guo know about her background. Lin Ken ended up in prison for drug trafficking, caught in a cycle of crime that harmed both himself and others. Initially coerced by a supposed elder brother, he wasn't willing at first, but he boarded the ship of thieves. When he was arrested, the main culprit who had ensnared him managed to escape. When the prison notified Lin Huiwan of Lin Kan's death, she thought, maybe it's better not to live anymore. Her husband had passed away early, leaving her with only one son, her sole remaining hope. She sold her one-bedroom apartment and bought two plots in the best area of the Shishan Cemetery, planning to have one for herself and one for her son. Before her suicide attempt, she visited a temple to pray for Lin Kan, hoping he would reform in his next life and live as an honest man. A monk stopped her, saying it couldn't be done. He died in prison, so he didn't repay all of his crimes and debts this lifetime, and they'll carry over into the next one, where his fate will still be troubled and he'll suffer, the monk said. The monk probably just wanted to trick her out of some money, but Lin Huiwan believed him. She wanted to help her son pay off his debts and leave the world cleanly, so he could reincarnate. It would have been ridiculous. If you put it on someone else, they would be scolded, but this was a desperate mother who had been waiting for her son for 10 years. She already had nothing. There was no house, only two graves. After settling Lin Kan's affairs, Lin Huiwan moved to a suburb of the city, where she began to earn a living by picking up rubbish and scrap metal. Fewer people called her Huiwan, and her name was replaced by Grandma. In the years that followed, she aged too quickly. In the fourth year after Lin Ken's death, the main culprit in the drug smuggling case was caught and sentenced to death. In the spring of the fifth year, news of the execution came from the prison, but Lin Huiwan learned unexpectedly that he still had a wife. There were still many questions about her son's affairs, so she went to find the woman after finding out where she lived. But the tree fell and the monkey scattered, and she found out that the woman left her three-year-old daughter in the garbage dump after the incident. She found the emaciated little girl in the garbage heap, holding a rotten apple in her hand. Lin Huiwan asked her if she wanted to come home with her. There was a voice roaring in her chest, you will regret it. But there was a glimmer of excitement and hope in the child's eyes. She couldn't turn a blind eye or stand idly by. The fortune teller once said that she would have shallow descendants in this life. After more than 60 years of delay, there was only one weak and helpless Guar. She couldn't tell if it was God's punishment or God's gift. Time passed quickly through her fingertips, getting closer and closer to the day when Lin Can was originally released from prison. Lin Huiwan had been living for this day for so many years. 
But now that the heart that was originally firm has been hindered by the cries of grandma, after the Guo year after year, she seemed reluctant to leave. But that day after Xiao Qing talked to the Guo, the Guo suddenly agreed to leave here. Lin Huan thought it was fine this way. She bought a new set of clothes for the Guo, packed up the daily necessities, and took care of all kinds of matters one by one. The waste piled up in the yard was sold for money, plus the little money saved over the years. Lin Huan pinned all her money under her pillow. Wait until she dies. If someone is willing to take her corpse for her, this little money can barely be used as a reward for her hard work. A few days before the Guar left home, Lin Huan let go of the big yellow guard. This little dog picked up by the Guar ran out excitedly and disappeared in a hurry. She suddenly left. The day the Guar left home happened to be the day Lin Ken was originally released from prison. Grandma watched the little girl's figure walk away and turn back home. She locked the doors and windows, took out the bag of coal that she had bought early, and lit the charcoal. In that instant of lighting the charcoal, she suddenly regretted it. She didn't want to die. She didn't want to leave the gore. She wanted to watch her grow up. She didn't want to die. The space in the room was very small. In just a short moment of hesitation, it was difficult to breathe. She began to tremble all over, tears flooding her face. She urgently walked to the brazier and tried to stop the charcoal from burning. She stumbled and fell. The brazier was overturned. Sparks climbed up the cotton curtains, crackling. She lay on the ground, reaching out but unable to reach it. The flames flickered. She had no more strength. In the firelight, she faintly saw the phantom of the guar. Grandma was transferred out of the intensive care unit, but she hadn't fully regained consciousness yet. Guo stayed by her bedside, tears streaming down her face. Auntie Zhao Qing explained everything to her, how grandma accidentally caused the fire while trying to commit charcoal burning suicide. Even though Auntie Zhao Qing tried to explain to her for a long time why grandma did this, Guo Er still didn't quite understand. But Guo Er understood one thing, grandma didn't want to abandon her, she was just suffering too much inside. Guo Er thought, when grandma woke up, she would make sure grandma didn't feel so bitter anymore. A tear fell onto grandma's hand. Her hand, weak and curled up, suddenly moved and then slowly opened her eyes. Guar rushed over and hugged grandma. It felt like a reunion after a lifetime apart. Tears welled up in grandma's eyes and streamed down her weathered cheeks. Her bony hand gently stroked Guar's back, just like she had comforted her countless times before. It's so good, Grandma thought. It's so good to see Guar again. On the day Grandma was discharged from the hospital, many people came. Chun Mei supported Grandma, Xiao Qing walked beside them carrying a bouquet of flowers, Wang Lan held Guar's hand and chatted, and Lao Li gestured with the car keys ahead of them, urging them to hurry up. Wang Lan eventually decided not to adopt Guar. Of course, she loved the child, but she could see the reluctance in grandma's eyes when it came to Guar, and she understood the deep bond between grandmother and granddaughter. At the hospital gate, after bidding farewell to Xiao Qing and Chun Mei, Lao Li drove Guar and grandma home. As dusk fell, the grandmother and granddaughter got out of the car at the alley mouth and waved goodbye to the people inside. They watched the black sedan drive away, and Guar tightened her grip on grandma's hand. Suddenly, a dog barked behind them. Guar turned around, joy spreading across her face. Grandma, it's Big Yellow. Big Yellow's back. The little dog wagged its tail and darted towards them, happily circling around them, repeatedly pawing at Guar and Grandma's trouser legs, whimpering softly. Guar picked up Big Yellow. After a few days apart, it was dirty all over, its fur unkempt, and it panted with its tongue hanging out. I knew it, you're so smart, you wouldn't really get lost. Big Yellow struggled a bit, and Guar put it down. It excitedly ran ahead, and Guar lifted her foot to chase after it. The tangerine sunset bathed them in its glow, and at that moment, Guar looked back. Grandma stood there, watching her, a faint smile on her face. Guar's eyes welled up with tears. Grandma, free of guilt. From now on, a new life begins. For some reason, under the setting sun, 
Guar felt that grandma's back seemed more stooped than before, her hair whiter, her whole body thinner and frail. They were people on the margins of this era, bereft of children and spouses, impoverished and destitute. Guar's grandma once told her, you should shine brightly like the rising sun. You should always be honest and upright. Guar ran back to grandma's side with big yellow following behind. Grandma, let's go home quickly. Guo said earnestly, I promise you, I'll study hard, find a good job, earn lots of money, and buy a big house. And we'll eat meat every day. Grandma held Guo's hand and simply said, as long as you're safe and healthy. Let's talk about the rest later. Who knows what the future holds? Grandma only wanted Guo -er to be happy and content. Reluctantly, Guo muttered, okay then. Under the setting sun, they formed a beautiful silhouette, a grandmother, a granddaughter, and a dog walking side by side, eventually disappearing at the corner of the alley. On the day Guar received her acceptance letter, it was a splendid sunny day. The sun hung high as the delivery guy on his electric tricycle shouted outside the yard, Lin Chaoyang, Lin Chaoyang, come pick up your delivery. Guar dashed out in flip-flops, warmly thanked the delivery guy and dashed back inside. Grandma, my acceptance letter has arrived. Grandma was chopping vegetables. Upon hearing this, she quickly set down what she was holding and eagerly said, quick, let me see. Although grandma couldn't read, her face lit up with joy. Gua had done well. She was accepted into the best normal university in the country, enrolled in a tuition-free teacher education program. Guar thought that her dream of becoming a teacher was about to come true very soon. Grandma held the acceptance letter, looked at it over and over, feeling it wasn't enough. She wanted to frame it. Gua smiled and stopped her. Grandma, we can't frame it. We need it for registration. Only then did Grandma relent. Are you going to Wang Auntie's house this afternoon? Gua nodded. Yes, it's her daughter's birthday and she invited me. Not long after Grandma left the hospital, Wang Lan and Lao Li suddenly received news that the failed tube experiment had been successfully fertilized and gave birth to a healthy daughter a year later. Wang Lan liked Guo er, and over the years, the two families often got together. She has drunk the wine of willingness without focusing on the drink, Guo er told Grandma in the ear. Grandma said, they've helped us so much, it's only right. Don't complain. Guara hugged Grandma affectionately and teased. Are you suspecting others' intentions again with your old lady's heart? I'm not complaining at all. I'm very happy. Grandma pretended to scold her, and Guara cunningly dodged away. I've been thinking, in a couple of days, I'll invite Chun Mei and your aunt Zhao to dinner. I owe them for your admission to university. For Grandma's adoption certificate, Zhao Qing didn't know how much effort she had put in. Later, she helped apply for government subsidies. Guar agreed and then asked, how's Aunt Chun Mei been lately? She's doing well, Grandma said as she picked up a knife to continue chopping vegetables. After selling her motorcycle, she got a small car for what? Ride hailing, so it's not as hard. She told me the other day that she's paid off her mortgage. Guar couldn't help but smile, imagining Chun Mei's proud expression. After lunch, Gua her bid farewell to Grandma, slinging her bag diagonally and pedaling away on her bicycle. The streets were lined with greenery, and the crisp sound of bicycle bells echoed through the streets and alleys. As the wind passed through the trees, the sun shone brightly. Gua traversed through time and light. Suddenly, she sped up her pedaling, her heart surging as if she were racing towards a foreseeable bright future. The sunlight fell on Gua's face. She smiled. You see, even as insignificant as a mayfly, one can still have a life as radiant as the morning sun.